Packershaw Superior Vespia. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. Yes, in true Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews fashion, I've gone back on my word again and I've gone weak at the knees at the prospect of a German beer. However, this is the Hackershaw Superior Fest beer, which in my opinion is one of the best Christmas beers around this time to come out of Germany. Now, a very kind subscriber on the channel told me that the House of, uh, not House of Trembling Madness, um, Beers of Europe were carrying this. So I put a big order in with Beers of Europe for a lot of English beer, which is all in the fridge and it's coming, don't worry. But I wanted to review this and it's a really good beer from what I remember. I, tr I reviewed it on the channel about three years ago, possibly two years ago, and it was outstanding. It was one of the best fest beers I'd tasted all year including the Oktoberfest stuff as well. Now, from my research, this is a Mertzen, and it does, as you would imagine, contain Hallertauer tradition hops. They are the hops that give German beer, or Bavarian beer, I should say, its true character. Now, yes, the malt does make a huge contribution to the flavor with that, you know, that liquid bread, of course. Never under, underestimate the power of German malt in brewing and the yeast of course, which, which is the glue that holds beer together. But the Hallertauer tradition hop is basically what gives German beer its true character. Now, I'll get onto the characteristics of the Hallertauer tradition hop in the next section. But as I said, this is a Mertzen. Now Mertzens can be hit and miss. Fest beers can be hit and miss, but you have to remember about Fest beers. The, the term is a very loose term. It can mean an Oktoberfest beer, it can mean a Christmas beer, it can mean a beer brewed for a special occasion. Now, if you recall the little Oktoberfest beer pack, and I've still got it, I haven't got rid of it, I'm a fucking hoarder, I admit to it. Uh, I'll just give you a quick rundown. Now, these are all classed as fest beers, if you can see it. However, there's one there that's called a Kurter beer. That's specifically for the anniversary of a church. Um, what else? There is a Fest Mertzen 1543, Tizenacker. I don't know what that is, or Tizenacker, I should say. Some of these are for other festivals other than Oktoberfest beer. So when you see the term Fest beer, you shouldn't think automatically it's for Oktoberfest, and you shouldn't automatically think it's a Mertzen. Because as you can see on here, these are all Fest beers. That's uh, a Weizen, uh, Fest Weiss, as they call it, I should say. Uh, some of these resemble Hellas's, some of these resemble Mertzen's, and yeah, it's it's a whole mixed bag of stuff. So Fest beer is quite a loose term. Not as loose as Land beer, which fucking anything goes with that, but it's not automatically Mertzen. So now that we've got that out of the way, um, <laughs> what was it? I got, a, I got a comment the other day. 16 minutes, it, it took you 16 minutes to say that the beer was good. Well, you know, you know I like to waffle. I'm like Ronnie Corbett, I'm about his fucking eye and all. He was a midget and all, wasn't he? Yeah, I like to waffle and I like to give you a bit of history about the beer. If you don't like that, you can always skip ahead. And if you don't like the channel, you don't have to watch it. I'm not forcing anyone to do it. Anyway, with this on the table, I really am going to stop waffling. And I just want to get onto the next section, I'll tell you about the hops that are in here and we'll go from there. Five hundred ml bottle, six percent. So yeah, in keeping with a fest beer of um, quite hot, high ABV. Uh, the hops, as I said, are Hallertau tradition. The characteristics of that, well, let's take that back a little bit. Hallertau tradition hops are a derivative of some of the other other noble hops that are 
grown in that Halatea region. Now, there is an exception, of course, Sartz hops. They are grown, I think, in the Halatea region, but they're normally associated with uh, Czech Republic around that area because that's what makes a Pilsner a Pilsner. Sartz are full of spice and there are um, uh, different uh, breeds of Sartz hops and derivatives and um, different types of Sartz hops. Some are stronger than the other. They've got different names. But basically the characteristic of Sartz hops is the the spiciness and again that is prevalent in the tradition hop. Now the tradition hop came about in 1993 and it was derived from the middle through, the Halatau middle through hop which was very prone to mildew, it's prone to disease, the yields were getting poor and the Hull uh, Hop Research Institute decided something had to be done so they developed a, a, a variety of hop that was based on the mistle through, but was more robust in terms of defense against diseases such as mildew, mold, etc. Now there's also um, a bit of the Halatau gold hop that's in here as well. So as you say, it's, it's, it's kind of like a hybrid hop and the characteristics of it, it encompasses quite a lot. And if you're gonna you know, pick this apart, you need to determine what all the flavors are. So. You've obviously, if you've had Bavarian beer, you've tasted beer with um, Halatau tradition hops in there. And the characteristics are, it's, big characteristic of it is it's woody and earthy notes. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm trying to describe, if you've ever been into a garden centre, occasionally you do get the smell. It's a mixture of kind of, I wouldn't say freshly sawn wood, but like damp wood, earth, musty, that kind of, in a good way, not in a bad way. It's got some of that in there. English hops do have that in abundance, but there's also some of that on this hop too. Another big thing that you get from this is the freshly cut grass or hay notes. Now, in, during the summer, I was, I was taking the dogs for a walk over the fields and all that, and they'd cut the grass, and I really was getting a, a strong type of f uh, smell from that cut grass. And I could sort of see how that works in beer, when, you, when I talk about grassy notes, that's kind of what I mean. Hay, grass, freshly cut grass, green grass, that kind of, that kind of smell. And it's pleasant, it's sweet, and it's kind of herbally, if you know what I mean. The other thing about this is quite fruity. So there are nectar fruits, such as peach, um, citrus, and lemon and lime as well. Now, don't take these as isolated flavors. It's an amalgamation of all of them, and they are quite subtle to pick out in the beer. So when I'm talking about this and you're sitting there going, oh, no, I can't fucking taste any of that when I drink German beer, you really have to concentrate. I'm not saying it's, you know, you're gonna get fucking Robinson's lime when you drink a beer, but if you put your mind to it and you, you, know, you try and detect them notes, you will find them in there. And as I mentioned, there are herbal notes and there are spicy notes as well. The spice is like a kind of a black pepper but again, these flavors are subtle. You'd have to concentrate, but the amalgamation of all of them gives it a unique flavor, and that's what you get when you, uh, when you try a really good German beer. That's what, that's what they tend to use. Uh, it's the hops from the, the Halatau region, usually tradition. There are variants, there's Perla, uh, Magnum, which is a bittering hop. Um, Halatau tradition is specifically an aroma hop, but it depends when you put it in, in the boil. It's not really a bittering hop. The alpha acids aren't as big as some of the other hops that, that, that are used for beer in Germany, such as Perla and Magnum. But there you go. And of course, this is gonna contain local malt from numerous different farmers around uh, the countryside of Bavaria, and they've got their own special yeast that they use in their beers. Now, as I say, this is a Merzen. I can't really remember what the color is, but I'm assuming this is gonna be an amber color in a traditional Merzen style. So let's stop gassing and let's get this open and see what's going on. Right, this has been in the fridge for about an hour and a half now. So well, no, a little bit longer than that actually, about, about three hours. So it's, it's not super chilled, but it's, uh, it's fairly cold. So there it is. Now, I did say that this was gonna be an amber color. It's, it's slightly darker yellow than normal. Don't know if you're getting that on the, on the camera or not, but on the nose, 
Yeah, lovely. Well, yeah, and there's them. There's like a sweet honey which is coming from the yeast, but there's also some of that that nectar fruit that I'm talking about as well. That's there. Lovely, lemon, lime, citrus. And it really is nice. It's, it smells quite sweet as well. Now, can you taste? Can you smell bitterness and sweetness? Well, you can kind of envisage what it's gonna what it's gonna taste like from the aroma, and that really does smell good. It's lovely, sweet, sweet fruit, almost like crystallised fruit. It's lovely. It really is nice, and I'm getting hints of orange on that too, like sweet orange, sweet fleshy. I'm not going to say fleshy blood orange. Who used to say that? That was the little Welsh fellow, wasn't he? Fleshy blood orange. That was in every beer that he tasted. Fuck you know. I don't even like blood oranges. But it is nice. That really does smell good. Excellent stuff. Uh, no hint of spice on there. I was expecting that, but not really getting that. But it smells absolutely amazing. Let's see what the flavour is. Zum Wohl, as they say in Germany. Oh my God, that is fucking gorgeous. Yeah. That is really, really good. And this is, uh, when it comes to sweetness and just overall, <laughs> overall fantasticness, is that's a word or an adjective. This is really good. Although the beer isn't as dark, it's on a par with the Hohentanner Mertzen, which I gave a 10 out of 10, and for me, that was the outstanding Oktoberfest beer for me, or outstanding fest beer for the Oktoberfest season. This though, this is out of this world. Oh, it's really good. It's fucking superb. It really is good. Finish on it is amazing. That really is an amazing finish on there. Okay, so what are you getting? There's a very, very, very subtle hint of ethanol on there. It's 6% and I am very subtly getting that. But what I'm getting mainly is a big honey sweetness. Lots of the bread, slight, I wouldn't say biscuit, but more like a sort of cream cracker type flavor on the palate, also on the finish as well. But the, there's big honey on this. It's almost like a honey beer, if you know what I mean. But it's so good. Full bodied, goes down really, really easily as well. I am absolutely loving this. It's fantastic. There's a little amount of fruit on there as well. And that's like a, again, I could be confusing this with the yeast esters or fennels, whatever it is. Esters are the spicy notes, fennels are the are the sweet notes, I think, not sure. I used to know, can't remember. Memory's gone, I'm like Homer Simpson. When I learn something, something else, something else has to go to make room for that new bit of knowledge. Right, it, it just goes down so easily though. But there is a ton of flavor on that. It is amazing. really nice there's also almost like a, a sweet candy note on it now sometimes I get that on macro brewed beer and it's not a good thing in my opinion it's like pear drops or something like that this isn't quite the same this is a, a sweetness that a sugary sweetness but in a good way if you know what I mean and uh, yeah it just 
it just really complements the beer really well. I'm absolutely loving it. And of course this conforms to the Reinheitsgebot, so I'm assuming that they haven't put any any artificial nasties in here. Um, I know that the Reinheitsgebot does allow export beer to be full up with whatever you want to put in it, but um, I can't see that on the ingredients here. It's just Wasser, Gasten, Malz und Hopfen. Of course there's yeast as well. Oh, but it's so good though. Fucking hell, this is a great fest beer. Not much of the the caramel on there. They're, I suppose you could say there's a slight note of caramel on there, but I don't think that's as big as it was on the Hohentana. But it is there. But this is all about the lovely honey sweetness. Really good mouthfeel, very full bodied, easy drinking, nice halatau top character that's on there. Nice bit of spice on the finish, I'm getting that now. But there's also a whole load of herbal and grassy notes in between and it is just effing well superb. Quite finely balanced as well. And uh, yeah, absolutely no complaints about this whatsoever. And I'm gonna go as far as to say that this is as good as the Hohentanner. And if I can get hold of some of that Hohentanner, I should do a head to head with the two because for me, that would be the two fest beers of 2023. Might have to do that. So what is the verdict on the Hackershaw Superior Fest beer? Well, it's as good as I remember it. And it's potentially one of the best Fest beers I've tasted of 2023. Now, as the cover would suggest, it's a kind of a Christmas beer. This wasn't done for Oktoberfest, and it's certainly not a rebadged Oktoberfest Märzen, as I kind of suggested. Um, it's as good, in my opinion, as the Hohentanner. If I can get hold of both, I'll do a head-to-head -head and maybe determine, in my opinion, what the best Fest beer was for 2023, regardless. For Oktoberfest, I think the Hohentanner won it. There were some good good ones, though. I mean, the, the Paulana was very nice indeed, as was the Hofbräu, but... For me, the uh, the Hohentanner was absolutely outstanding. And this, for me, is a contender as well. So maybe I shall make that happen. Now, as you can imagine, from all that I've said about it, this is going to be a 10 out of 10 beer. It's, it's superb. I don't think Fest beers come much better than that. That really is good. It's got a nice 6% ABV, so you know what you're drinking. Lovely flavours, but also with the drinkability. And this is what I... This is what I say about beer. If you've got all three in abundance, if you've got the great mouthfeel and the full body, if you've got the, the flavour and you've got the drinkability on there, then I think that's the combination to a great lager or a great bottom fermented beer. And sadly, a lot of British brewers are missing that. And it really annoys me. But there you go. Um, this, is, this is just fantastic. It's a 10 out of 10 beer all day long. I'm going to see if I can get the home tanner. We'll do it head to head. And then we will finalise which is the best fest beer for 2023. And remember, just like this stuff, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>